This week on Red Dead Radio, gameplay. Hi friends, welcome to Red Dead Radio, the Red Dead Redemption podcast. I'm your host, Jared Petty, and as always, we're going straight to the wild, wild guest. We're going straight to the wild, wild guest. We're going straight to the wild, wild guest. Yeah! Well, hello. Well, hello there indeed. Howdy. Is that, should I say howdy, partner? Or I don't know I what, so. the, what yeah, the rules are here. Yeah, howdy. I think howdy. with the accent, it's even better. Like I know, that. the British accent saying howdy partner just doesn't sound right at all, does it? Partner. Oh, partner. Howdy partner. What's that your, was oh, pretty good. That was impressive. Is that better? Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm do it again. No, I don't do requests. You just get like... <laughs> you, you, <laughs> One and done. They'll, they'll come in like that when you least expect them, but that's going to be it. So as always, our wild, wild guest, John Ryan right Hello. here. Red Dextbert. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, the, the red one. expert you got right it. there. And to his right, your left, the fabulous, the wonderful, our very first ever guest who's uh, written Star Wars, I believe. I, I co-wrote a Star Wars. Yeah. Well, Gary I mean, you wrote a Star War. A Star War. You yes. Did. That would be that would be the singular form. Mr. Gary one Witta. Singular. Singular. What is the plural? Star Wars. Not yeah. Star's War? No. no well, that, otherwise that it would, would be called imply, Star's War. Right. Well, that would imply that Star is a person who has a singular vendetta. John Ryan, now you promised you were going to talk into the mic, and here you are already. When you think about it, maybe it should be called Star's War, because it's not Star Wars, and it would suggest multiple wars over one star, Uh as opposed to Star's War is one war fought among many stars. But now that's that's more accurate. But now that we've seen the the multiple wars in the prequels and original trilogy. That's true. Over the course now of the three trilogies, wars. there are multiple wars. There's a, or, or, but, but multiple, but also multiple stars. So maybe it should be Stars Wars. Stars Wars? I'd watch that. Well, anyway, you wrote one of those. Yes. I, I co-wrote Star Wars uh, Rogue One, yes. You did. And right. As well as other feature-length motion pictures. Yes, The Book of Eli, uh, which I wrote, and How After you? Earth, which I co-wrote. And then uh, in addition to that, you have a career in comics, television, all kinds of things. Right? Yeah, I've done some TV. I've done some comic books. I've done some, uh, some, some books. I wrote a novel and some short stories, stuff like that i've done you a few s- things you just wrote the comics adaptation of the force awakens of the last jedi or the last jedi pardon me yeah that's right i did i go we're currently uh, we have one more issue to go of a six-part series been a lot of fun to do to adapt that movie into comic book form which i think cool. is pretty darn cool and, now and of course in many ways the star wars uh, films are uh, westerns they have very very deep western roots so oh, maybe it's maybe it. it's a <laughs> maybe it's a uh, a force of nature that's that's brought me here a through those force through those Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a good one, isn't it? It is. I think it's serendipitous. So, uh, oh, what, <laughs> who what need, is this? Who needs Jump, JR? Who needs I'm JR? Done. I'm <laughs> done. He's ready to go to bed. <laughs> JR's had a long day. Oh, man. Y'all know why, but it's still good. Yeah, it's a, and that's what we're here to talk about. So this episode's going to be a little different format than what you're used to, because today we had that Red Dead Redemption trailer gameplay drop, and we know that's what you're here for. So we're pretty much just going to talk about that. Now, we also brought Gary on before we knew this thing was going to drop to talk about all kinds of other Western stuff. Such fun surprises. And he'll be on next week for that part. We're going to go ahead and film that tonight and add that to kind of part two of our discussion around the trailer. So tonight, right now, for this episode, we're pretty much going to focus entirely on that. Don't worry. The rituals are all coming back at all, etc. But I think it's time for us to just go ahead and dive into the Red Dead Redemption 2 mm. gameplay world reveal gentlemen tell me your thoughts i think what blew me away the most was the fact that they managed to cram so much of the 45 minute demo that we saw back in march and some new shit yeah into six minutes yeah um i mean like it wasn't the the whole of everything that we saw um like they said that the next installment is going to focus on missions and we saw a mission played through and stuff um but it there's so much to unpack there. and it's, But this is all, what you saw today was from the same slice that you saw when you were at Rockstar. It was, I mean, if it was different places and different characters. Yeah. But, you know, the mechanics that they showcased today was, was basically everything that we saw. Okay. Um, the whole interaction system and the way that you interact with the NPCs, uh, the horse stuff. Um, the gunplay up to and including and we, we need to go ahead and get this out there now when you mentioned the horse stuff horse stuff that you're talking about the horse testicles of course 
Yes, yes. We did, in fact, see horse balls. I've seen a lot of messages today about horse testicles. I love that. As well you should have. There's the six-minute reveal of, of possibly the most gorgeous video game I've oh ever beheld. Oh, my God. It's so And what pretty. I get are a bunch it's of messages so about pretty. horse testicles. So that, that was definitely... Look, they're beautifully rendered horse nuts. Well, I mean, you know. Give them proper credit. There is a solo team working on just horse balls for four years. Can you confirm that? Um, I can confirm that there's basically been a team working on just a horse for four years. Yeah, just like horse team. Um, team well, horse. so I mean, that's 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 how they're able to do such like I mean, you saw the you you saw the the fucking crazy vistas and, and yeah. like local details, like that pistol that Arthur pulls up with all the fucking engravings on it, like all of the massively intricate attention to detail. Like that's how they can afford to do that. They have a team of four people building a horse for four or five years. And, and out of four or five years, a certain amount of that time is going to be spent on the balls. Right? Oh, yeah, I mean, at, least, at least a couple of You months. can't just phone the balls in. No, yeah. they, look, everything in that game has to have the right physics. So that means that they have to sway. And they, they have, have to, to swing bounce, and they sway they and bounce and, bounce and, and jiggle. And then, of course, there's also female horses, too. Yeah. So everything's rendered properly there, too, as well. I would assume as much, yeah. Yeah, so, so we, got, we have, we have uh, horses of, of all, all shapes and sizes. Yep. Uh, out there. And with the fact that we have different kinds of but I'm yeah, glad we got that out of the way early. I just figured it was going to come up. We might as well pop into Head that. Head it but, off in the past, so yeah. to speak. <sighs> okay, so everybody... That's good. Head it off. Uh, very right. good. But besides horse testicles, um, a lot of impressive things here. Gary, what, what's something that jumped out at you? I'm, I'm just glad, first of all, that the gameplay video dropping coincided with my appearance on this podcast. Because, yeah. you know, it, you, you guys... I was worried that I was going to be coming on here like doing this... For an oh, hour, like trying to, and... well, no, trying to just just trying to stretch out, you know, like we need to stretch for time gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. because I didn't know what we were gonna. I, I watched a couple of episodes of the podcast before I came on, and it's they've all been really entertaining. But there's not always a lot of new. It's not like there's new information. It's not like Smash Brothers where there's new information every week to talk yeah. about. We've been starving a little bit since that last cinematic trailer, and I was booked to come on before the gameplay trailer drop was announced. So I came in going like, I don't know, I guess I'll talk about something, about favorite Westerns or whatever. And as it turned out, uh, you... I'm having to come on right as the big mother load of new gameplay information dropped. The only thing I'm a little bit sad about was, I think I'd mentioned this before when we, you and I were on Kind of Funny. I was planning to go complete blackout. Yeah. After the second cinematic trailer, I had decided I'm not going to watch any more the first time I see gameplay, I want that to be when I'm actually in front of my console yeah. with my controller going, let's go, let's play this game. For and sure. I want it to be all completely new. But I felt like I couldn't really in good faith come onto the podcast Without checking saying out. to you, well, I, mean, I, to I toyed with the ideas. I maybe, maybe I'm going to come on from the perspective of someone who blacked out on it. And every time you talk about it, I just go, la, 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 la. <laughs> but that wasn't going to really that, work. Right. And the, honestly, tr the tr truth be told, even without the podcast appearance, as soon as I said, I'm not going to watch it, I'm not going to watch it, I'm not going to watch it. And then I saw the thing in my Twitter feed. I was like, yeah. of course I'm watching it. But Greg Miller took a little credit. We recorded Gamescast today for, for being like, no, Gary, you have to. Uh, he said you guys were on Games Daily yesterday. And he yes. kind of pushed you that direction. Yeah, he did. I told him that I was that I told him that I was going to be coming on Red Dead Radio. And I was concerned that I was going to have to go watch the trailer that I had promised myself I would avoid it. I got to say, now that I've watched it, I'm glad I watched it yeah. why? because why? It, because it it, it 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 continued to whet my appetite for the game. It gave yeah. me the extra boost to get you know. I guess it's going to be this and maybe one more gameplay trailer is what we're going to get before launch. It out there'll be much more than that. Yeah, maybe one it's... final mega trailer or something because um, we've still got a ways to go. But I am glad I watched it. It definitely kind of got my excitement for it going again because just visually, obviously, it looks Ooh. absolutely stunning. Yeah. You know, I, I expected it. I have an Xbox One X. That's what I'll be playing it on in 4K. Um, and all the footage they dropped today was 4K footage. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty good whether you've got a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X. Yeah. That's pretty close to what you're going to be getting. Um, but it, it looked good. There was one particular shot where they were walking through a forest at night and it was all lit by the lamplight. And that just looked, the lighting in that just looks so oh, yeah. stunning. I think, I think the, the bit where they're riding through snow, um, it's, it's Arthur and Dutch and they're riding along through the snow and like the snow with, is... With the gas lamps? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it looks stunning. Like, then it comes to that backlight and it's like the the lighting effects are working as the snow is like, the, the light particles are bouncing off of like every bit of snow in a gust of wind as it goes by. Like so, the snow is sticking to their jackets. Like. It's not like something I needed to be reassured of because Rockstar obviously have a long enough track record in this business now that we know that the game's going to look stunning, but it's still nice to see it. Oh, and yeah. Go, oh, yeah. 
It, it's it, as stunning it as we hoped. It's yeah. as stunning as we hoped it would look. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about this before that when the Xbox 360 PS3 version of GTA 5 came out, yep. it was fairly late in the generation, and smoke should have been coming out of those machines. It should have. Uh, it, it was just so much prettier for an open world environment than anything that we had seen up to that point. It yeah. was just stunning. Uh, that's what we're used. What I, what really grabbed me. Right? There's so much to dissect from this, but while we're on beauty was that this was a beauty made out of, and John's made this point before, it's made out of little things. It was lighting cutting through trees. It was the glow of a lamp. It was uh, an animal scurrying through the background. It was, was, somebody wrote in here, uh, it was the, uh, the use of mist and lighting not to reduce draw distance, but to enhance it. It was those little things. I forget sometimes that Rockstar's a studio that's about little things. So I, uh, I 100% agree that that's exactly what I love the best out of this trail when it comes to any actual meat and potatoes of what's inside it. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that blew me away the most, um, I mean, granted, I was coming at it from a slightly different perspective, having seen it before um, when I saw the game back in March, but there was a moment where in the very beginning of the, tra- of the, of the video, when, or not very beginning, anyways, when Arthur gets kind of pushed through that window and falls out into the street to fight that dude. If I went through it frame by frame, cause I was like, there's no way they can do that. There's no, Oh my God, they did it. Um, as, I mean, they make a point of saying this is all legit gameplay. Footage. Yeah. Well, so if you, if you go frame by frame, like I did, he, lo- he falls off of the deck lands in the mud and the mud then proceeds to like make an accurate Arthur shaped indentation that then slurps and slouches out of the way as his arms move across it, as his knee tries to get up and slips, as he rolls over. Like, there was zero need for that to be the way, the, a, a, a place that they invest uh, time, energy, and money. But God, they did it, and it's just so good looking. Yeah, I, I'm glad you bring that up. We sent a call out to the Red Dead Radio audience for the moments from this trailer that really jumped out at them. Oh, here we go. I would say that awesome. one of the things about those mud physics that you mentioned is that you say that they didn't need to invest that time and effort into it. And arguably, maybe they didn't. But I would argue that maybe they do. Because even though there are some people that are going to freeze every frame, the Digital Foundry guys, oh, yeah, and people yeah, like yeah, you yeah. that are going to go through it and, and but notice it is- that. But I would suggest that even though you don't consciously... I didn't. I didn't consciously know that, notice that. No, all I know. Not. All I know is that I came away going, "That looked real to me." Yeah. And and subconsciously, I am registering the mud physics and every little thing that makes it right. look real. I may not go, "Oh, look at the mud," but somewhere the work that they did paid off in exactly. my subconscious I mean, appreciation it's, it's, of it's it. It's that some of the parts that it is making up. Yeah. Um, and you know, again, like they. That's that's what makes a rock star game a rock star game you know the fact that in gta 5 when you turn off your car the engine continues to idle and click for a few seconds right yeah i remember i when i first played uh, the uh, next gen version of it just the, seeing the seeing the reflection of neon in the wet road as i would drive yep. by like i just hadn't seen that before yeah. and it's not just about showing off it's about creating a more immersive yeah and it, but it's not like if I were going through linear levels, I've seen games that are truly beautiful. Oh, yeah. This is about being able to walk in any direction at any time and experience beauty that's made to be taken from any direction you walk. And it reminds me when Nintendo talked about making Breath of the Wild and how every few months the whole staff would play through the whole game during development. Yeah. And then they go back and make the game again. Uh, it, the so whole the, game all over again? They would, Well, they would build on top gotcha. of what they built, but they would play what they built all the way through in that epic giant game that's and they'd be madness. like okay how do we make this game better and they would awesome. re- re- and then then six months later they do another sprint right they build another version of hyrule and they'd all play it again crazy and i i guess that's that same kind of philosophy there i wasn't able to find that comment i was looking for i'm not sure what happened uh-huh. to it but what i want to do here is we had we had members of the community write in and say hey here's what we know so i want to go through theirs and have us talk about some of the ones they pointed out and then at the end we'll wrap up and cover uh stuff that we noticed that doesn't get covered here for sure so uh here's the first one this one actually from ye old fan of the show mitchy d mitchy d mitch dyer mitch dyer indeed uh the uh the right uh, well yet Mitchell another D. star wars another writer. star wars writer that's right wrote, wrote, uh, i guess Battle that Front means two. that you and i now have to write a star war oh i mean i'd be very happy to write a star war if someone's offering I, i'm utterly unqualified but i'd be very happy i know to you're do starting it. to look left out over there guys i'm feeling left out yeah, over what here the hell? you're gonna write a star war no we're gonna write a star war together or a star's war 
You write a Star Wars War, I'll write a Star Wars. We'll see what happens there. Right. You'll have Star Wars. Exactly. Stars is his Warsies. Anyway, Mitch Dyer. A horse bucks his dead rider oh. at 440, and it's unscripted <laughs> physics. It's so good. As he's hurled <laughs> off. Yep. And also the horse jaunt into a sprint at 524. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about both of those. So John, you got all excited. I do. Well, I did because the 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 physics of specific. I mean, the, obviously, like with the mud stuff and with uh, the rocks slide that I've mentioned before, like where you go down a hill and like one rock knocks into another and another and another. Um, the environmental physics are great, but the question that I've gotten the most since we started our coverage in May has been. What are the physics like in combat? Because everyone remembers Red Dead Redemption having those like really great, sometimes kind of wacky physics where you would shoot a guy in the shoulder and he'd like spin around yeah. because the bullet hit him so fucking hard. Um, and so I'm really glad to see that kind of come back. There's that great moment. I think it's about a minute or so in. Um, it's the first time or the second time that you see like proper. Oh, wait, no. So it's. The... Sorry, I've been doing. Uh, Rewind theater for this literally all day. So yeah. I've just got time codes and time codes and time codes uh, stuck in my brain. It's around four minutes in, I think. And uh, it's when Arthur has the shotgun in one hand. He's pulling out his revolver in the other. Um, where there's also this great moment where he shoots two guys and then just switches the weapon to the other switch. one, which yeah. is fucking super yeah. rad. Um, but the first guy that he shoots gets shot in the head. But you notice that like he's kind of running with his head down. The gunshot tips his head back, which brings his body up higher, which then causes his arm to kind of slide this way, twisting his body as his legs continue to run forward until he finally topples over. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, cool, great. It's it's exactly what I was hoping it would be. Yeah, and, then, and, and then having that confirmed, watching that man get pinwheeled off of his horse after he got shot. You just like, it, it feel, everything feels dynamic and realistic. Also, history nerd side note, Old bullets uh, traveled somewhat slower ranges and were kind of fatter and softer than contemporary bullets. Ooh, and so, painful. yeah, they, they had less muscle velocity and they were soft lead. And so getting thrown around by bullets, even though they were actually in some ways less penetrating, made you get thrown more. Like a modern bullet fire from an, you know, you get shot by an assault rifle. Yes, it's going to knock you down, well, obviously. Then, but it still does, despite the horrible exit wound, just right. kind of go through you. Yeah. Old bullets would hit bone, and the bone would like shatter, and you would get thrown physically by so the bullet. So I, I revoke my wackiness comment and replace it instead with historical accuracy. Yeah, it's it's kind of kind of like a modern shotgun blast is shown as knocking someone down. Those are yeah. very similar to an old gun. They Inter are fundamentally similar to, to that. Cool. Well, thanks for that history tip, buddy. No, but I love love me a good history uh, history tip there. The scene that what, physically anything jump out at you, Gary, in this. A couple of things that I really appreciated. It's funny the things everyone something pops differently for everyone, right? The things that you appreciate, and I I, I wasn't necessarily freeze framing or looking at pixels or looking at mud splatters and things like that to the degree that you fucking I'm crazy, a, it's okay it's okay say it say crazy it fans oh i was just like kind of taking it in in the hole but there was a couple of moments i'd say there were two moments that i went okay wow uh one of them and they're, they're both different one was kind of, again in terms of the program in the physics and just how beautiful it looked they talked about how you could hunt animals in the wild and then bring them into the store to sell them yeah. pelts and things to, to to get you know money and others trade for goods and a, a deer or something that was on the back of the guy's horse. Yeah. And it's, even as the, the dead animal was being ridden into town, it retained its own physics and yeah. seemed to have its own properties and yeah. qualities. And it just felt like that's what, a, yeah, that's what a dead animal thrown over the yeah. back of the horse would look and move like as it's being ridden into town. I just thought that was, was stunning. Uh, and then the other thing that was just kind of, this is not necessarily like a technical achievement, but just in terms of production design and the fact that they have set the game very much, they talked it's a little bit in the trailer about how the game is set very much at the end of the old world yeah. and the beginning of yeah. the new industrialized modern world. And they showed, you know, the, the, and, and, and as they were talking about that, they kind of uh, juxtaposed that with, with these illustrations of here's an old fashioned Western town and a prairie and, and, a, mm -hmm. and, a, and a saloon and things that you'd expect to see in a Western but then they said, and also the modern world, and it looked like a much more modern twenty, the beginning yeah. of the twentieth century yeah. city street with like electric lights and a, and yeah, a movie the theater, theater, and it was like, the oh, theater, that looks amazing. Yeah. Like that's typically the, not the sort of thing that you would see in a western. And I think it was a very, very smart decision on Rockstar's because one of the first fundamental decisions they make is, okay, what is the game? Where is it set? Are we doing a classic western? Do we want to do something about the transition from the old world into the new modern industrialized world? And they did that, and it gives you a flavor and a feel like just just seeing electric lights on yeah. a street that doesn't suddenly it feels like something new yeah, and, I I just, and it was beautifully rendered as well oh, yeah. 
I love that a lot. When you're talking about the environment and about that old West, this is set, you know, 12 years earlier than yeah. Red Dead Redemption, but it's still already past the age of what we often think of as the Old West. I mean, the, the Old West that we imagine uh, from movies really was from about the 1860s to 1880s. So we have moved into this transitional period that they historically kind of dive into here. But even then, a lot of the American West was almost completely undeveloped. And so you have things like being able to just go out and hunt and there be critters everywhere. It yeah. reminded me of, of, I was thinking about when I was up in South Dakota and I was standing in a graveyard in, in the middle of nowhere in the prairie and there was just wildlife everywhere. Jackrabbits just running through the graveyard in the middle of yeah. the day, unafraid of me. Curious, how did you get there and why? Oh, well, a long time ago, I uh, almost took a job pastoring a church in South Dakota. Okay. And I really liked it there, actually. It was a really neat place. And uh, while I was walking around out there, uh, somebody took me to the church's uh, graveyard, which was a few miles outside of town. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Great. And then I was standing out there. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere, and there were a bunch of animals. I don't know if you just, like, wandered into a graveyard at night. I like to wander around graveyards. Uh, hunting hunting ghosts, walk. maybe. But instead of graveyard cast, this is Red Dead Radio, is. the Red Dead Redemption podcast. So we are going to talk about the comment, because this does fit that whole wild thing. Lots and lots and lots of animals running yeah. around. A couple of comments here, uh, but one of them, somebody pointing out, Hypecaster says, best alligator scene in gaming yet. Horrifying. Fucking horrifying. Wait, did I, I must have missed, I, I watched the whole thing. There it's was like an alligator quick, scene? It's like a quick, like, two second oh, thing. If I'm not freeze framing it, I'm maybe it's, not seeing it. Okay. That is a good looking alligator. It's, it's legitimately like, it's, it's that, you were talking about how it's like leading through the, the woods with the, the lantern. So yeah. No lantern, just moonlight. Okay. It's like swampy, muddy. Nasty, oh, I'll have to go back and watch it again. Like, it's like swamp forest. Like it's not like waist deep water. It's, right. it's regular mud. Um, but you see Arthur's riding on his horse and this gator just kind of like slaps around, but like the moonlight catches its eyes just so that they like glow yellow. And right. your horse does this really great thing, which is, I think it was to actually illustrate this point where your horse will get, scared of predatory wildlife and depending on how strong your bond with it is you'll be able to control it better or not but as it like swips around it's like Rah! your horse is like oh fuck what the hell yeah um and like you can see it's like main kind of like twick up and then like the ears kind of twitch and like it sort of starts to move this way but arthur's like no no, no it's, it's okay to, to be to be fair i've lived in florida and i've encountered gators at night at about that distance and well, I, fucking I, scary. I likewise acted like that horse of course yeah, yeah. I, I was also neighing except I fleed and you know I've seen myself. I've seen gators in zoos in pools and acted like that their gators are fucking scary they're literally dinosaurs yeah they're, they're, fun fact about gators fun fact they bark they've learned to eat dogs in Florida oh, and they've learned no to, so they sit in the water and go Roof. Roof. Why would you tell Roof. me this? This and is the, the saddest thing, thing ever. Water to find out the gate will come out and eat him. Yeah, so. You know, it occurs to me as we talk about all of this that, and, and appreciate all of the detail and work that goes into the um, you know, every every mud splatter and piece of lamp light and uh, alligators and so forth that you almost appreciate a game like this more than you would if it were just a movie. Because mm -hmm. if there was if we if we were here talking about Red Dead Redemption the movie trailer and it was the same trailer but all live action. You still appreciate all those same things in a movie. You appreciate good writing. You appreciate good acting, directing, uh, visual effects, uh, you know, performance. Yeah. All of those things that you have to build in a movie. You have to build all of those things for Red Dead as well. Red Dead has acting, writing, cinematography, editing, direction, all of that stuff. But there's this added level of like they had to build everything one pixel at a time. Yeah. As a, like when a horse rides onto in, in a live action western, when a horse rides onto the onto the uh, into the frame, you go, yep. That's a horse. They yep. got a horse and put an actor on it, and, and, and it looks real to me because it's a real horse. In Red Dead, you go, oh, my God, that horse looks amazing, and I know it's not real. Yeah. yeah that's they had to build all the... They said, they said that's, that's, that's a whole team working for four years to build that horse. Yeah. yeah. And so there's this, I, think, I think we appreciate it all the more because you realize they had to build everything from scratch. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's something that uh, 79 Mossy said. You know, the environment's breathtaking. I mean, look at the animal that appears at 449. I think it's a mouse. It just kind of walks up in the background, and you have this. Every one of those things that isn't real. It's just—it's a background shot. It's—it's it's a background frame, but it—it it is striking to think that every one of these things is created through laborious attention yeah. to detail. Through that, somebody had to make all of this, not paint it into a painting, not even animate it into a movie, but build an intelligence for it. Build a, that is really cool. It also, I—I I think feeds 
very strongly into, we, we talked about Rockstar being about details earlier. They made it very clear that this is a game where they're trying to smooth the edges of what makes, you know, in video games, we get the exclamation point over your head. Oh, that's a quest. Right. You exactly, know, we get that. Yeah. But that, what does that look like? Right. What does that look like in a game where we want to be immersed? So Sancho West says the roving base camp seems to solve the issue of fast traveling back to your base camp or to various points to receive side missions. So I'm going to focus more on that side mission part of this. We talked already about these immersive creatures, this beautiful environment, but the other part of making a very realistic game is rounding off those edges that, that take us away from the experience of it feeling real. When they started describing, hey, so as you're chased around the world, you're establishing new camps everywhere you go, which I think is actually a new detail. I, I, I didn't realize the camp would be moving around. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is really cool. But beyond that, the fact that I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to get my side quest by making friends with people. And it's not going right. to necessarily be, hey, I walked over and got a side quest. It's I hung out with this guy at the fire and I heard some stories and he got grumpy because I didn't bring enough meat and it happened to be nighttime and he'd been drinking too much. So right. now it leads naturally into, is it a main quest? Is it a side quest? It's a part of being alive. There. Yeah. And I mean, that's the, that's the whole thing of, you know, this sort of new, I, I hate focusing on the word system, but like the way that you interact with things, um, it, it's all super contextual. Like the, the conversation that you have when you choose um, antagonize, for example, because if you looked at the bottom right hand side of the screen when they were talking about all of the ways you can interact with people, um, you, you know, your usual options would be uh, greet, threaten, uh, call out if you're on a horse, I guess, uh, and then uh, diffuse, if diffuse, if you're, yeah. diffuse if you're in conflict, uh, but then antagonize if you want to be a dick, which let's face it, I'm going to push that button a lot. Yeah. Oh, you're Captain, Captain I'm going to play antagonist. This game three times. The first time, just how I want. And then the second time, complete white hat. And the third time, complete black hat. Just what to see how it goes. That's how I always play Mass Effect. I always do a Paragon playthrough first, and then they do a complete renegade dick, okay. yeah. dick move playthrough. That's the deletable save. Yeah. How are you going to play through uh, through this? I think I'll probably try to find a middle ground. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, like, let me let, let me sit on the horse and see how I feel about yeah. it. And like, get to know the character. And I'll, I think it's too early to, to say how I want to play. I'll take... I think sometimes you don't. I'll, I guess what I'm saying is I'll find my character as I go. Yeah. I don't yet for no. I don't yet know enough about the story and the circumstances surrounding Arthur Morgan to know what kind of character mm -hmm. I want to play. I do. I won't say. I will say one thing that I really responded well to, that I loved, is the the, the choice dynamic because the, yeah. the original one didn't have that, did it? Not particularly. No. Yeah. So the, the, the press triangle to be a dick and press circle to be a nice guy. I always like those kind of. There was there was an element. Uh, there was one scene where a guy hanging from a cliff, and you could either kill him or save yeah. him. I yeah. love those kind of choices in games. They really well, reveal character. And so that's kind of the thing where like it goes back to what you were talking about, where it's like acquiring these side quests by, you know, becoming friends with people. Like, so the the icon for what the hell is his name? Uh, Jimmy. I know you're tired of hearing it, John, but I'm barely picking you up on the audio. I'm talking into my mic now. Um, so chop that little chunk out. That's all right. Um, but the dude hanging from the cliff, like if you noticed his name, they all have a little name like based on who they are. So like strangers are strangers, like gang members are, are gang members, cops are cops, deputies are deputies. Um, but this guy was specifically titled as Man from Blackwater with a special gold name tag, which okay. nobody, nobody else that we saw had. Um, and we also saw that dude in a cutscene like a hot second later. Okay. So it feels like there are going to be more decisive side missions mm -hmm. but it sounds like they'll also be those more emergent ones where you can you know follow a dude on a horse talk to him for a little while and say hey buddy i think i like you a lot How i mean that, that that's I, I the organic emergent nature of the of yeah. the gameplay and the mission generation i think is going to be really key to it if you think about like westworld like the experience if, if westworld were real and you could really pay a shitload of money and go and be a guest in that world yeah that's as realistic as they can make it yeah. right short of actually sending you back in time. That's as realistic as they you can make it. You just got me really excited about that. Can we get a flying DeLorean and just do that? <laughs> Please instead? and thank you. Well, they well, did it in Back to the Future 3, right? Yeah. They, they went oh, back there. Shit. You've got a flying DeLorean in GTA Online. Yeah. So. Oh, maybe mash up those two franchises. Well, somebody, uh, on one of our very first episodes, somebody wrote in and said they wanted to find the flying DeLorean in a cave, like somewhere, just like buried. Oh, that would be cool. That. If, yeah. Especially if it has the skeleton of my GTA character in it. Oh, that would be a Oh! Like... I hadn't. If it's like that episode that. of, uh, or that comic book where 
Indiana Jones finds the Millennium Falcon like buried in the Amazon with the skeletons of Han and Chewie in there. That's they weird. Could, have could, you never seen that? No, that just sounds weird to it's me. It's super strange. Like Han and Chewie go through some black fucking hole or whatever, and then like I, it cu- smash cuts to I, Indiana Jones I in guess. 1922. But the point I wanted to make was, if you go back, to, if you go to Westworld. The people that are the... It's very... I mean, as game players, one of the things we I think we loved about Westworld was you see the gamification of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, as soon as you walk down the street, you go, oh, that guy's a quest giver. Yep. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's... The, you can go get a quest from that guy. But he doesn't need an exclamation point over his head to right. tell you that. You just organically know it. Yeah. And that's what I love about the, about the Rockstar games. GTA games do this as well. There are no exclamation points over the heads of quest givers. You just know. You can just organically tell that. So you know, it's not like they're, they're picked out in bright colors or anything. You can just tell that guy is someone who's going to be worth they talking to. Have a big letter on their map marker, but like I said, on I the map on the it. map marker. But when you what you're actually looking at in the world. And the other thing yeah. I love about. I mean, who knows if it's the final version? But what I what I also appreciated about the footage that I saw today was minimal HUD, and they've so always done that. That's the cool thing. Is this HUD is fully customizable. Um, you can totally, like, most of the footage that we saw today had either those interaction menus or just a mini-map. Yeah. Um, and you can even get rid of those, it sounds like, if you want to. Actually, before you go on with that, John, we have a related uh, a message I want to read, and then I'd like you to respond to this. Uh, Steve says, I love the gameplay trailer, but I'm wondering about the accessibility aspects of the game. You can't really see it in the trailer for anyone with mobility issues, but for blind players or low-vision players like myself, a small HUD worries me and the text may be too small. Don't get me wrong, I'm super, super excited for the game. I'm just concerned that to create their immersive experience, the UI text may be too small for myself to read properly. Hmm. That is something that I think, you know, we're, we're definitely paying more attention to accessibility in games, which yeah. is really important. Like, I'm a big fan of Able Gamers and what those guys are doing. The Xbox accessibility controller, yeah. I think, is tremendous. We want to see more things like that. And it is, I, see, I do see more and more games that have colorblind modes and, mm-hmm. like, big text modes and things like that. More of that, please. I mean, I, you know, we didn't see any, uh, like, menus or AV settings or anything like that. Okay. Um, but, I mean, since the HUD is so customizable, like, I mean, you can choose whether you want to see health bars or dead eye meters or whatever. Um, you know, I, I would obviously I don't know for sure, but like I'd be kind of surprised if there wasn't at least a a text scaling option. Mm-hmm. I've I've definitely my, my thoughts on accessibility have have changed as I've learned more about it as times passed. By yeah. changed, I mean I hadn't thought about it as much as I needed to for a long yeah. time. Two two incidents changed that for me. One was when I was working here at IGN, and somebody brought a batch of capture gameplay back for an unreleased game. Mm. And there was something about the gameplay that looked very off to me and to other people. And we discovered that the person that had captured the game here, an IGN employee, had captured the game in colorblind mode. Huh. Well, it turned out that employee was is colorblind. colorblind. And so, and that actually made me go, huh. The world That's a serious is thing. different for other people than it is for me. I probably should have thought of it. Second, those, those was, moments of forcibly checked privilege are a hell of a thing. Yeah, I remember. I remember playing. I was playing an online game recently with a friend of mine who I didn't know was colorblind until he pointed it out, and I, and, I, and it sounded. I, I apologize. I apologize at the time if it if it if it sounded to him um, patronizing, or whatever. But I said, I, so I was asking, so what what do you see? What does it look like to you? And he was like, what that that's all just one color. This, this that all just looks kind of gray to me, and. And it looks so different to what I was seeing. It's it's hard to empathize. It's hard to put yourself in the shoes and go, oh shit, that's what you yeah. you don't see what we see. But when someone talks to you about it, or you get, sometimes it's fun. I shouldn't say fun, but it's it, it's illuminating. If you if you have a game that supports colorblind mode, turn it on and look how different it looks and yeah. realize oh, that yeah. that's how a normal game or how off putting a normal game might be to someone who has that impairment. Yeah, especially do it with a game that's like incredibly colorful. So like take right. something like you know God of War or. Splatoon or something Splatoon cla- crazy or colorful. Yeah. Witcher 3. Witcher 3 is a great one to Think do about it for Splatoon, right? Has always has two very distinct colors. Like, for example, like a lime green and a purple. Yeah. To a colorblind person, that looks the same. Yeah. Mm. It's just kind of grayish. Yeah. The other one that's always got me is when my wife had her accident yeah. and lost the use of, uh, of most of her limbs for a very long period of time. Her, she lived and died by one hand and an, I, uh, an iPad. That was her connection to the world. That yeah. We were really, really fortunate to live in an age when that was available because 
Suddenly she was able to tap out emails or texts one letter at a time. She could watch movies. She could Skype people. She yeah. could things that only five years before would not have been available yeah. to her. And she'd have just been sitting for months in a hospital bed, unable to do anything because yeah. she couldn't pick up books. She couldn't pick up controllers. She couldn't hold a phone to her ear, but she could do that. Yep. It was, it was really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, looking ahead here, um, another person, uh, this is Austin, who noticed uh, possible John Marston in that campfire scene. Possible? He's all yeah. over that trailer, son. Yeah, Come on the, now. Got that John Marston and John, Abigail, Abigail and, and Jack. Jack. I did see when... when uh, you got the whole family. In the short period between the announcement and the actual gameplay trailer dropping, I saw there was some conversation of what do you most want to see? And I saw a lot of John Marston. That's what, are, are, people, oh, yeah. are people just seeing what they want to see? What there? No, I think that's I think that's okay. John Jack and Abigail. No, okay. it, 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 yeah. it, it like who else would have a kid in there? And like also, so there's a couple of reasons why I'm like fucking sure. Uh, first off, we see Abigail right after that campfire scene, uh, and she is talking to Arthur. Uh, she she uh, she says something along the lines of, "So you save his life, and then the next time you're out there, you're out doing something." She's pissed at them for getting in some kind of trouble. Yeah, um, and. Like, if that's not a reference to that first sequence that we see where he's got those big, fresh scars in his face, which are also very clearly older in a couple of different shots, mm. um, I will eat a hat. A hat, you say? A hat. Not my a hat, because I like my hats. But some hat. Potentially one of those cheese hats. I don't even one of those hats made out of cheese. Or like, if there's one made out of like cotton candy. I like that, that while we, the Gary's kind of playing with USB ports and that little thing on the table. I was just you know, kind of fondling I just this little, orifice right. here. I was just wondering if you're just going to be like like electrocuted or something. No, I mean, you know, I mean, maybe. Certainly, I if, I got, if I got... You can't see it because of our excellent electrocuted to death <laughs> on your podcast, what a, what a boon that would be. That would be a boon. For your podcast. If we captured, we captured your electric. I don't want this show to become a fucking snuff film. No, faces really faces of death. death. No, no, let's not do that. Those... Oh, now I just feel... Gross. Anyways, yes, that was 100% John that you saw at that campfire. And I will say with 90% accuracy, maybe even 93, uh, that that was Abigail next to him and uh, little baby, or not baby, but like toddler aged uh, Jack. Do you Hill. think, I have a question for you, and you may know more about this having seen more of the gameplay than Shrug. I have. Do you think that in this game... Rockstar will be repeating their by now somewhat signature trademark that we saw in GTA 5, that we saw in L.A. Noir, that we saw in the first Red Dead of having you play more than one character. You know, it, it, I don't have any particular inside knowledge of this, but I'm going to say no. The rumor that I heard when they first announced it that I thought was, I don't think this is what they're doing, but I was very excited about it, was that they were going to repeat the three person story structure of um, GTA 5 and do mm -hmm. a good, the bad, and the ugly kind of thing. That would have been so cool. Okay, I mean, that, that would have been rad. That would have been but you know, rad. What I, what I kind of like is that like there's potentially that option for single player DLC. Right. Like, you know, we, we know that they've built and figured out the architecture to make, I mean, obviously not within this specific engine, but if they're clearly willing to spend a long time building something. It's interesting you know, like, to see how Rockstar have done taking different approaches to that over the course of their development career. Though, if you think about La Noire, yeah, that was like two thirds of the way through the game, they pulled off a really weird switcheroo. With, oh, I'm this guy now. That's you remember sad. that? Like two thirds or three quarters of the way through, suddenly you're this other guy. Yeah. Um, Red Dead Redemption, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a surprise way, way almost right. the epilogue of the game. Yeah. yeah. And then in GTA V, they built the whole game around that model. So they, it's interesting how they've, they've experimented with different versions. And of they it. were yeah. so obviously proud of that, that three-person switching in GTA V. Because I mean, it was, was great. Huge, yeah, it's really, really a neat feature. But I mean, if you count yourself, four-person switching. I, I almost feel like this is... Red Dead and GTA, while, while Red Dead 2 is in a lot of ways the sequel to GTA V, they are vastly different games tonally. And yeah. I do think that they are trying to... Trying but yeah, a lot of their development a, roadmap goes through cross, crisscrosses between the franchises. I know what you mean. Yeah, but I, I think that tonally, they put so much emphasis in Arthur and the marketing and what they've shown us so far. And they're already doing so many world-bending things. And they've kind of pushed this whole Europe piece of the world as opposed to the world revolves around yeah. you. 
Maybe they really do just do want you to inhabit that one person. I mean, that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I I'm would, leaning toward. I wouldn't It'll be the first time in four games that they've done that, if that's true. Just yeah. something to think about. I yeah. wouldn't necessarily be surprised if at the end you end up playing as somebody else because yeah. certain horrific They always have a little... Arthur. There's always some kind um, of uh, surprise towards the end of a Rockstar game. Yeah, but at the same time, though, like I can totally see because we've never heard of this guy until now. I mean, granted, we've never heard of most of the gang until now. But I can totally see them basically having you just be like, oh, well, he and Dutch's gang parted ways, and then he just went and lived off in the woods somewhere. I, I totally think Arthur survives. That's my I hope so. Guess. I really do. Um, um, my, my first thought when they first did the reveal for that was that he turned into Uncle. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I thought that's where Uncle came from, but clearly I was mistaken. Oh, Arthur seems way too competent to be Uncle. He's also um, way too young and yeah. sober-ish. yeah. This one from uh, Redek at uh, CD Projekt Red. Um, hey, buddy. Uh, environment artists did an amazing job over yes, there at Rockstar, especially in regard to nature elements. All the mountains, forests, and plains look outstanding, plus weather effects and daylight, etc. Anything yeah. else we want to say about that? It's nice that? when you get kudos from other developers. Right? Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Particularly I hope, developers I hope you've whose also game, told them and that. CD Projekt Red's games obviously look. Oh, Phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I think so if they're saying that they, this game looks great, that's a pretty good uh, yeah. recommendation. Yeah, because prior to this, I think Witcher 3 probably sets the standard for what outdoor open world games should look like. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's a couple of shots that are huge standouts for me, and the one being that woods, woodland in the snow shot that I mentioned earlier. Um, the other one is Arthur sort of cresting this hill into a very... It's like a tall, grassy lowland area yeah. with it's sort of like a, a not overcast, but it's lightly cloudy and like there's big god rays coming through the sun and like the grass is blowing in the breeze just ever so slightly and it's just like shit. Yeah, I there's so much. I and then you have this again, those huge, beautiful environmental details where I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm traveling with Teddy Roosevelt across Yosemite, you know, when yeah. it's being turned into a national park. It's one of the great things about the Rockstar games is they, they build such a cohesive world. I remember there were parts of GTA V when I would just stand at a street corner and just watch the world go by and go, yep. man, look at this place. Yep. And, just, and just appreciate it. Yeah. And I think you do that even more in a Rockstar game because, again, I can go stand at the corner of Hollywood and Vine or whatever the fictional equivalent is exactly. in, in GTA and go, yeah, that's amazing. I remember standing at the, at the center of, you know, Liberty City's version of Times Square yeah. mm -hmm. in GTA 4, yeah, 4, and going, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. But with West, sorry, with um, Red Dead Redemption, it's even more so because it looks completely real, but you also know that you've been transported to another time and place. Yeah. I think... For me, it comes down to what you're looking at in those terms. Like, so for Red Dead, it's very much the environment. I'm I'm watching nature just sort of in terms of like flora exists and like the weather patterns roll by and and uh, animals kind of come and do their little things. And in GTA Five and GTA Four, it's all about the pedestrians' interactions with one another while I'm just kind of fucking standing there. The funny thing about it is, for me, in Red Dead, and I'm thinking back to my... And I went back and watched some of the old Red Dead... Some old Red Dead Redemption footage today as homework for this because I, I was going to tell an anecdote about the crossing into Mexico, you know, when the music plays. And yeah, it's this oh, beautiful moment yeah, yeah, in gaming. Yeah. I went back and watched that clip. And it's the... I watched it under the worst possible circumstances because I watched it back to back with the Red Dead Redemption 2 oh, no. trailer. Oh, no. So going back a generation, you oh, know, from from ex, like. from from plate because I think the footage they showed today was on PS4 Pro. It was uh, PS4 Pro, but I mean, what I will say real quick is that like we saw it on base PS4 hardware, and it still looked fucking right. incredible. I'm very, I'm, I'm going to get the One X version because I just like the controller oh, better, and you know, it's just where I it's like to platform. play. And I, I suspect that once Digital Foundry's done its thing, they're probably going to come out saying what One X slightly has the edge because that seems to be the case most of the time. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 such a fine edge for me at least that I'm not. Most super people, on the, it. the mad pixel counters will know. You know, people that look oh, at yeah. staring at horse balls will notice the difference. Yeah, the rest exactly. of us probably won't. Staring at horse balls is my. One of, so one of the banned. funniest tweets I saw today was a fake Digital Foundry tweet, which I was talking it. about how yeah. the how the. The horse balls on PS4 are only in 1440p, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the horse balls on Xbox One X were, were pushing full 2160p, 4K. <laughs> Was there checkerboarding on those, those horse balls? No checkerboarding. They were all beautiful right. horse balls. All right. You know what? This We've come all the way around to horse balls. We have. We've come full we, circle. We began with... Much if you know, if, that's why I did it, because if you know good storytelling, you always come yeah. back around. It's true. Yeah. So there's so much more in this trailer to cover. Oh, my God. A million little details... 
I, I'm still marveling at watching the revolver be loaded. Oh, and right, knowing the fact that all of your bullets are real? Yeah, yeah. they're all popping Hey, here's in. a fun fact. All your bullets actually exist. Yeah, like, because this is in gameplay. Again, I'm just like, what? But uh, we're not going to try to break all this down tonight, so we, come well, back. I mean, we couldn't. We'd be here for four yeah. fucking days. So come back again uh, next week or to talk about this some more, as well as have some other stuff with uh, Mr. Witta. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us here tonight for this very special episode. Uh, this is a, a really, really cool time for us. And you can always mail us at mail at reddeadradio.com. Um, our show is supported on Patreon at patreon.com slash Jared Petty or at reddeadradio.com. This is uh, part of how I make my living, and I uh, sure would appreciate that if you enjoy listening to this every week, uh, that you would pop on there and do that. Also, if you have the opportunity, uh, hop on iTunes or uh, and give us a uh, give us a rating. Five stars always the proper rating, in my opinion. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. You're allowed to disagree, but and a review uh, because it, it really does help. We're moving into the season from. You know, I've kind of thought about this in terms of seasons, and we're kind of ending season one very soon. Pretty soon we're gonna have a new studio built. We've got the Red Dead Radio Live coming up at PAX in just we a couple do. of weeks. Oh god, I have to play um, so many games. Yeah, which is really really exciting. Uh, and we're, we're moving to this place where we're from the the pre-launch build-up to that review season, time to come so out. So are we going to call October 26th the launch date for season two? I think even a little before that. Um, I think around when we All move right. into the new studio All will right. probably be the, the right. launch for season All two. Right. Um, but we're a little, way, a little ways from that yet. Anyway, uh, Gary, you're coming back magically through the power of time warps next week. But uh, yes. before you go, uh, anything you want to uh, plug uh, or that we didn't cover that you want to hit? Um, not particularly. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Gary Witter, at G-A-R-Y-W-H-I-T-T-A. That's mm-hmm. kind of where I'm mostly visible. You can follow me on Twitter. You have a very entertaining social media presence. Well, thank you very much. As I said before, I don't get out much. So a fun follow. My, my social media feed is pretty much how I interact with the world, or at, world at large and I have some tweets about my screenwriting work and, uh, you know, some, some blatant self-promotion, but, you know, some Good. funny stuff too, I hope. Uh, blatant self-promotion is kind of, I mean, the fact is uh, that that's how a lot of us make our living, so it works. Oh, well. yeah. Yeah. And John Ryan, you have labored Who boy. today yeah, to produce been a, long day. a product. Will that be up tomorrow? Um, that'll be up later this evening, in fact. So by the time this actually hits the internet, yes, it will be up. And that um, is? You can find on IGN a as quick a goings through of all of the details and and points and like mechanics uh, that I've been privileged enough to see uh, watching the fuller demo of the game uh, and sort of how they explained that to you uh, in this six minute version. Uh, so that'll be up on IGN uh, uh, and you can probably just watch my Twitter feed. It's pretty much a frame, for frame by there. frame, right? Um, not entirely. Okay. I, t- I tried to basically format it around um, mechanics. Oh, and can t- I interrupted while you're doing your Twitter, so please. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Um, yeah, it'll probably be on, it'll be on IGN when this goes live and you can probably see it being shouted from new rooftops on my Twitter at USOJR. So. Yep. Uh, hey, uh, in addition, uh, just a couple other things. My friend Strawfoot uh, runs a wonderful Monster Hunter channel uh, on YouTube. He's had a lot of success there with his lore videos. But he had me on uh, earlier this week uh, visiting and talking a little Monster Hunter. Hell if you're yeah. interested in that, pop over to Strawfoot's YouTube channel and uh, we'll talk Monster Hunter for a little bit. It's like a short video. It's like 12 minutes. Um, but uh, I don't know what that looks like. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun little... What's dis- a short video? With me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I always talk way, way, way too much. That's why we're doing this. And finally, uh, I know it's a lot of plugs tonight, but it's Red Dead Relevant plugs. Um, If you want to get caught up on Red Dead Redemption and you haven't been playing uh, along with the full game. uh, Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. you did this thing. I did this thing. Over at that place that I work. Yeah, go to IGN. Oh, I saw that today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Red Dead in five minutes, IGN.com. I wrote the script for that. That is... Everything you need to know about Red Dead to get caught up in the story yep. in five It's a little minutes. primer if you hadn't played the original or if, for someone like me who loved the original, but yeah. has kind of forgotten oh, a lot yeah. of it, frankly. It needs a little refresher. Yeah, it hits the high points there. But uh, yeah, that's uh, narrated by Max Scoville. That was produced by uh, Pat Kaufman and uh, Mark Medina. Oh, yes. And uh, I Love wrote the script. Guys. So. Uh, hop on there and take a look at that. Check it out. Friends, thanks for letting us do what we love for a living. Um, really appreciate it. We will see you next week. Happy trades. I want to thank Patreon producers Stuart Ferguson, Tom Bach, Jonathan, Austin Riley, and William Holbert for making this program possible. Thanks all.